Liverpool Football Club. Revered for decades as football's gold standard, routinely won league titles and European Cups as if by divine right. Though rich in tradition, the club was slow to adapt to the advent of the Premier League era. A team that once saw triumph as their due has not won the league in over 26 years. Enter manager Jurgen Klopp, an exuberant, driven, tactically intelligent change maker with a track record of transforming the clubs he leads into buccaneering, winning teams that fulfill their passionate fan base's wildest dreams and then some. I travelled to Liverpool and met with the former Dortmund manager to uncover the secrets of his leadership strategies, hear how he learnt them and go inside the mind of Jurgen Klopp. There's the leap from Jurgen Klopp. A chest-pounding reaction. He can have a good chuckle about that. Klopp is delirious! Jurgen Klopp, this season, one of the sights I've enjoyed the most. It's not a goal. It's not a save. It's the sight of you on the sideline when Liverpool have scored in full-throated, unbridled joy. What goes through your mind in those seconds? Is it the, the thrill of a fan? Or is that a manager who's seen something that he's worked hard on the training ground pay off on the field? Oh, I've not a real idea about going back to my mind when I watch it afterwards. I think it looks like nothing. <laughs> um, actually, and, and most of the time, I'm a, a cool guy, to be honest. I'm not too easy. Um, I'm not getting angry very, very quick. Um, but also I'm always on a, more on the positive side. But during a game, it's something, something happens with the first whistle. I'm not too sure what. Um, and um, but everything is different in this moment. So I'm, I'm smart enough to know that there are a lot of nearly everything is more important than football, but not for me in this 90 minutes so, or in England 97 because they live love overtime. <laughs> when I saw five minutes overtime, I thought oh, I, I couldn't understand why. <laughs> yeah, but during these 97 minutes, and um, I'm involved. However, um, I try to push. If you think you are tired, what should me? I'm not. <laughs> So maybe I can give a little bit better. I'm like the, 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 the petrol station, uh, like the engine. If um, somebody's tired, I try to push a little bit and to give a few information. But it looks really crazy, I know. It's a transformation that comes over you. You turn into like an air guitar here. <laughs> and when I see you smash your spectacles while celebrating in a moment of victory against Norwich City. It's crazy! It is insane! And so is he! Every Liverpool fan I know, every Dortmund fan that I, I know, we see a man who loves football, emotional football. Yeah. And I don't want to project, Jürgen. What is it that you love about football? First of all, the possibility to win. I love the game in itself. That means 11 boys, how I started, um, play together, make each other better. Um, you can win against better teams, that, um, things like this. You don't have to be the best and can, but you can win. Um, things like this, I love this. I, I love good tactics, I love um, possession, I all love all the things, that, that's the truth. But I think the, the only reason why we should watch it is because of um, the emotion involved in this game. It's nearly, in my opinion, um, the only sports where, where it is like this, it's like emotion have this big influence. An uplifting moment for Jurgen Klopp. If you compare it with basketball, for example, so it's not that physical. You can It's physical. I watch games and it's great what they do. It's unbelievable, talented players. But it's different. It's not it's one-on-one. -on -one. It's not this body touch things. It's, um, and you have uh, the best players still can decide the game alone, like Curry or whoever now, three points, three points, it's not really to defend things like this. So in football, it's always to defend. Um, even Lionel Messi is to defend, even Cristiano Ronaldo is to defend. And so I, I love this. It doesn't matter what happens around. In this, in this 97 minutes, you, you really can dip in the game with everybody who wants to and can forget everything around and, and, and be part of the win or part of the defeat. And everything is better and easier when you do it together. And that's what I love.
I love to be together with other people. And so in this moment to, to feel the same or to feel the diff completely opposite of what the other team feels or the other crowd feels. <laughs> so this, co this together thing, I love it, to be honest, and split it or cut it from, from, the, from the, the, the brain thing. Uh, what do we have to do in the right moment from the tactical thing? I think it's a mixture of all, and that's what I like. Your love for the game goes back to your earliest days in Stuttgart, in the Black <laughs> Forest. You started your career off as a part-time player. You worked in a video rental store. <laughs> you loaded trucks, but then you found a home with Mainz yeah. in the German second division. I read that you were passionate, if not skill-blessed striker <laughs> Thank and you. defender. You once said, I had the talent for the fifth division and the mind for the Bundesliga. The result was a career in the second division. Was it as a player that you realized that what you lacked in skill you could make up for with passion and tactics. I don't know. I was I was really really quick for a six foot four or something. You big man. Yeah, and was pretty quick and a good header <laughs> and a, a big heart. So I could run a lot and quick. So that's um, maybe better usually for light athletics. But um, I, I I love to to run with the ball. So that was okay. But of course I was. Um, quite important for all the teams I played in. It was only one club, but um, different teams, because the other player changed all the time, only I was something like... Um, yeah, a constant. Yeah, always there. Um, I was always something like a leader in the team, uh, a little bit of pusher already, and I was uh, <laughs> the emotional part of the game, a little bit more angry than other players. I thought a lot of times I should do something serious um, because it was not too good paid in Mainz. Uh, it, um, it was uh, most of the time at the 20th of each month. It was um, something like became difficult, <laughs> but I loved it too much to stop it. Obviously, I did the right thing because um, uh, it gave me the opportunity to, to become a manager. That's what I always wanted. That's not easy and um, I had not only in this moment luck in my life. I'm interested. We, we are so much of managers in the world of football. We expect you to be tactical genius, psychologists, sports scientists, negotiators, data analysts, motivators, and charismatic PR heads. From your experience, what's the single most important skill a manager must have to succeed? Oh, knowledge about football. No, that's easy. So if you have no idea about football, you have no chance. So at the end, it's, it's all, it's, it depends to different things. So when I started in 2001, it was quite different, especially in the, in the, in the second division in Germany. So nobody was really interested. If I would have managed the team naked, nobody would really recognize it. So um, um, it's, but we had not a, the biggest interest around us. Uh, Mainz was something like a small island. Um, nobody needed us, but um, we were still there. And um, that's that's the one thing. Then um, a big, big, big. Um, you, you need to to love the work. So it's it's easy if you like football. To, it's a lot of work. What what we are doing here with 20, 30 people, we did in the. I did the first few years completely alone, analyzes all these, all these things. And at the end, it looks like this in the moment. It's very important for managers, meanwhile, to always ready for, for press conferences and things like this, being something. If the best thing is you are a little bit strange or you're extremely smart or you have always a perfect answer or something like this. I'm a totally normal guy. Um, I'm the normal one, maybe, if you want this. <laughs> yeah. In my case, it is. I don't care. <laughs> I don't absolutely care. At the end, it's only football. I'm not interested in what um, everybody's thinking, what, uh, what they want to hear when they ask a question, because most of the time I think they didn't think a second about their question. Why should I think a second about the, my answer? Do you think that your team is already uh, ready to fight for the league? To fight for what? For the league, for winning the league. Oh, please, are you crazy? I, I, I was hoping that I don't understand the question. <laughs> but overall, it's, it's knowledge about football and like work together with young football players. And I love it because I always were a little bit frustrated about my own skills and now I work only with world-class players together. So that's pretty cool. All the things I had in my mind, they have in their legs and their mind. That, that's pretty cool. So they need only a little bit of pushing left, pushing right, giving a few informations, and then um, it looks pretty good, to be honest. So, and I, I like the, the whole job, but you are right. Um, it's a lot of things as a manager what you, what you should know about, but if you're smart enough, you have around you a lot of good people who are better in the things 
where you are not too good in. And I was always smart enough to to um, have the best people around me. That's in my in my coaching staff, together with Jacob Bubac and Pete Kravitz now here with Pepe Linders and John Afterberg. It's it's brilliant. I really love working with them, and they are all brilliant in what they are doing. And if you do this, and then I think you only can be better and better and better. So, what, what is the most important role a manager has to play, Jurgen? I have no idea because I never played a role, to be honest. I, I'm always, um, I have no time to play a role. I have no time to think about what other people expect of, from me. It's, it's only, I, I do what I, what I think is right. When I started um, as a manager with 33, I, the day before I was a player. So I had, no, I had no time to plan my managing style. Since then, I'm, I'm st I'm all, was always working. So I had no time to, to watch how, how other people are doing. I always uh, tried uh, to do it my own way. So I have absolutely no idea how other managers are working. I don't know how it usually should be. I only can uh, speak about my, what I mean, my, our way. That's all. And um, I'm pretty sure it's not the best one. But for us, it's, 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 it's pretty, it's absolutely okay. And we, we like. Now, how we do it, and we are, we are only together because of our quality, but we are friends, and um, yeah, working together with friends, that's um, the best thing you can do. Your work paid off, and then some at Mainz. You, you work wonders. You drag the tiny club with the smallest stadium and tiny budget into the Bundesliga. Built hailed you as the Harry Potter <laughs> of German football. The club was left with a new stadium, bigger budget, a vibrant youth academy. It wasn't magic, though. I mean, it was more down to the fact that you realised smarter tactics, better conditioning <laughs> could tip the scales for your team against those allegedly of superior quality. Yeah, the best thing at Mainz was that really we, that we, that we started really together. Very young, no experience, but big heart. For, for what we had to do, so um, there were no expectations because the, 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 when I when I um, um, became the manager, it, um, we were I think something like twelve points or something behind. It was really not uh, it was not too easy, and um, yeah, we did it. And so next year it was we enjoyed it. We learned everything together. It was the best thing what you can do starting in a small club like this. It was um, yeah. A lucky situation, the, the right people in the right place in the right moment, and uh, we realized it and we used it. And, and we started uh, something like a dream and um, um, that a dream come through. And we didn't reach our target in the first, in the first year. We missed the, the promotion because of one point, one year later because of one goal. And in the third year we did it. So, and I know how to handle big defeats. So, it feels in the first moment always like the worst thing ever in history of human beings. But um, it made us resistant um, for all the things around. And um, I already had the worst moment in football life, I would say. So from this base on, it only can be better. Coming up, Jurgen Klopp describes the moment he knew it was time to leave after seven years at Dortmund and find a new home at Liverpool Football Club. It was not about because the last season was not not too successful. I'm not that guy. I don't need to win more often always than all the other people around. And uh, we're not too expensive and um, we could bring them together. They're still there. Eight, nine of these players are still at Dortmund. It was a great generation. It is still a great generation. One of my favourite quotes of yours comes from this era. It seems to capture the essence of your philosophy. It's not a case of finding the best 11 players but rather the 11 who are most likely to win. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm not an uh, uh, inventor or founder of this sentence. I, I don't know, but I think that's clear. So usually it's just mathematics. In football, 11 times 100% need to be more than 1,100%. That's possible, and that's what we always work for. It's working for the special moment. It's, I'm, really, I'm really thankful that I was part of, of really a lot of in games where I, before the game I could not imagine in my wildest dreams that it will work like this. These wonderful moments when you win completely, completely unexpected, that's, that, that, that's great. It's never to forget. And that's more than I could have expected uh, a few years before when I, when I started my career. So I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I'm really happy with, with the things I, I do. And for me, I'm, motivation is pretty easy because I love what I do.
You achieved a lot at Dortmund over the course of the seven years. League titles, the German Cup, the Super Cup, a darling run to the Champions League final. Can you describe for us the moment that you knew you had to leave? First of all, nobody was more, more, more surprised than, than ourselves that we could have win the league, to be honest, in 2011. We were really shocked, by the way. <laughs> um, but um, it was a good party afterwards. Delta come. Jurgen Klopp explains what it was about Liverpool that allowed him to emotionally connect to the city so quickly. I love football and I love the way Liverpool loves football. I love the way all the Liverpoolians live football, the history around Liverpool was even in Germany uh, a big, big thing to talk about. Morning everyone, welcome to Anfield. So the final thing for me to do before starting is to introduce the top table and the new manager of Liverpool, Jurgen Klopp. You took a year off. And in October I tried to. <laughs> 2015, you made the decision to come to Liverpool and yeah. become the club's 21st manager in its 124-year existence. Liverpool is a club with an immense history, but there's very few fans who'd even consider that they could make the case that the club is a continental superpower right now. What did you look at when you saw this club before you came here? And how did you make the decision to say, this club, Liverpool, is going to be the next project for me? <laughs> OK, that's the 100% truth. The only club I, I finished my holiday early was Liverpool FC. So that's how it is. I, 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 to be honest, I hoped it will be later. I, it was not that I, no, I didn't think about football for three and a half months. First call, my agent called me and said, OK, Liverpool is interested and then I knew I don't have to ask my wife, I don't have to ask um, my two colleagues. Yeah, but it was clear. Describe it, Jürgen. I can't. It's because I love football and I love the way Liverpool loves football. And I, I love the way how all the Liverpoolians live football, the history around, the, the special commitment of all the people around. And it's in, Liverpool was even in Germany uh, a, big, big, uh, a big, big thing to talk about. Uh, it's not that I watched 500 Liverpool games and with this car in front of television and, and, and something like this. I really um, followed the way and it's more about, it's again more about emotion. I cannot explain it 100%, but it's... When we came here um, for a friendly game with Dortmund, I think one and a half year ago, it was always clear if there will be um, something like an opportunity, yeah then I would think about it. Did it help that Liverpool's revered as a manager's club? I know. Bill Shankly, yeah, I know. Bob Paisley, Rafa Benitez. I, I mean, they're all lionised here in a way that few players are. Not really, because I followed more the club, more the football than the managing history. And But of course, when you came here, again, then more information about the club, then I, then I started yeah, knowing more about this special kind of relationship. But that's not the reason why I'm here. Were you not tempted to choose a club, just bear me out here, that were bankrolled by an oligarch or a sheikh? I mean, you said about the financial gap when you were at Dortmund between you and Bayern Munich. You said, <laughs> we have a bow and arrow, and if we aim well, we can hit the target. But the problem is, Bayern always has a bazooka. <laughs> yeah, good sentence, by the way. Um, no. No, I... I I don't need a shake, to be honest. Um, so um, around and um, I don't need oil or something or more money. That's not the thing. It's, I think Liverpool in this moment was a club who, yeah, who, who needs a little bit of help. If we want, this could be a real special day. If we want. So I thought yeah, I could help. That's the one thing. I, could, I thought it could fit really well. And, and as a, and what I, I am in the first part, I'm, as a football fan, I thought they, they need a, a strong personality. We want to get back confidence more and more and more and more in our own skills, our own quality. I'm quite strong because I don't feel pressure from outside. To cool down the situation with always talking about the past and not be patient enough to reach the things in the future, that's a strange situation. It's absolutely normal, but you need somebody to say, okay, yeah, we can do it like we did before, and you will see it will not work like before. So um, you have to change a few things. We have to open our chests and then 
let's run and fight and, and shoot and all the things and defend together and attack together and all the things like in your best dream football looks like. And so now we are here and I think we are in this moment we have a, a really nice ambitious atmosphere so the people start enjoying this game, this game, this game and accept still that we are not uh, first off the table, but we are on a good way, we are on a good way and everybody can see it and, and they like the development and they celebrate the development and so in this moment Liverpool is in a really good mood. Next, Jurgen Klopp reveals what it was about the challenge that attracted him to become Liverpool's new manager. After this long lack of success, it's normal that the people are still passionate, but it's that they lose patience and that's what, they, what, what happened here. I will be here, I'll try my best. It's a remarkable city. I mean, yeah. it's a maverick city filled with outsiders, not unlike yourself. <laughs> At the same time, when I grew up here, it always wanted to seed off and become a republic of its own. Get away from England, become <laughs> the Republic of Liverpool. If you win the league, you could be the king of that republic, <laughs> Jürgen. But I'm interested. Liverpool's also a hard place to crack occasionally. And managers of Everton and Liverpool have come, stayed for a long time and not felt like they are really of the city. If you like, I could teach you a few Scouse phrases that might come in useful. Very, very useful for me, because if you speak Scouse to me, I'm off. No chance. OK, let's So here's start. the first one. You've been here for months, and you're already giving it bifters. You need bifters? <laughs> it just means, basically, you're just trying your best. Giving it, and bifters is for best yeah. something. Yeah. Ah, bifters. And how to pronounce it? Giving it bifters. I mean, you really feel like you understand the emotional pulse of this city. What is the emotional pulse of Liverpool? And how did you understand it so quickly? I don't, uh, Dortmund was a perfect preparation for Liverpool. I didn't think too much. I, I'm, it's, I think I am more, well, it's more a coincidence that, I, that I'm pretty exactly like this. Uh, and then we came here and we, we recognised that the people are, are really, really... Uh, nice and, and great people and so it's really very very easy to work for these people i think it's absolutely normal that um, after this break and long lack of success it's normal that the people are still passionate but it's that they lose patience and that's what they what, what happened here and to bring this back and but then to, to 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 show that we are still hard workers that's that's what we try to do not more not less but you know the british press better than i do if they want to write things then nobody can stop it and um but how i said for me it's not a problem it's only about um how what do the people think as long as the people want that i'm here and that i'm the right person well I will be here and try my best. I think it's not often you get a manager appointment where everybody is yeah. unanimous about the decision. Yeah. I think we're in for one heck of a ride. You've been handed a team that wasn't yours. I mean, from the off, you're essentially working with somebody else's tools, which is hard for any manager. But you demand a specific style, fitness, conditioning, a tactical transformation. We enjoyed it, of course, but we are not here to enjoy it. Now we are in and now we can work. How difficult is it to, to instill a system and a style of play on players who aren't equipped to play that system? Oh, that's, that's usually not too difficult, but you need time, and we had not time, that's the problem. So that my team is smart enough to, to, to play each system, but of course, football, 11 players, 20, 25 players, doing the same, it's not too simple. Uh, so the only problem was um, injuries and um, too many matches. That's that's the problem, and only between only recovery sessions between. So and it was my first time that I came in a, in, a, in the middle of a season to a new club. So um, it was uh, quite interesting. But at the end, it was unbelievable hard work, especially for for the players. And um, I don't. I'm completely different to the English philosophy. About we have to buy, we have to buy, we have to buy, we have to buy, and it's only all about transfers, all about transfers, all about transfers. So, because I, be I believe in training, but for training you need time and the right players. And if you don't have the right players, you have to make transfers, but you don't have to make transfers because you don't want to train or you have no time to train or whatever. So that's different. So, um, we use the time to train together, and I think that the players enjoyed 
that time now they feel the improvement now they they, they feel the development and um, so we could use it more often but um, it's a long way to go and um, yeah but how I said if um, everybody wants then we have enough time and then we can do something special here coming up next Jurgen Klopp reveals his unique approach to man management that's easy. You only have to look inside yourself what you like and what let you be confident. Your first game, a goalless draw against Tottenham. The lasting memory of that game at the final whistle. You giving out hugs like a giant <laughs> Teutonic Care Bear. There was a hug for Sinclair, a kiss and a slap for Ibe. I look at those hugs. I've got to be honest, Jurgen. I want one. It's the closest those guys will ever get to going back to the womb. You've got a reputation as a motivation master and a man manager. And in a short time, what you've done here with players like Adam Lallana, Roberto Firmino, Dejan Lovren, Divock Origi, and Joe <laughs> Allen, you've transformed their careers. How do you motivate a modern footballer? They've got so much money, so many endorsements, so many Twitter followers. How do you make them think about what you want from them, not just as an individual, but as a collective? What's the secret? There's no secret. <laughs> How can that be a secret? Um, Come on, there no, is. No, 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 there's no. Um, it's easy. I think it's easy. It's around um, creating a, an atmosphere where everybody feels really good, first of all. And then um, it's, you only have to, to look inside yourself what you like and what, you, what let you be confident. It's the, 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 the positive or sometimes a critical feedback from a person you uh, which is important for you and the most important thing these players are good i don't have to make them something special adam lalana i knew him before i came here i saw him playing in southampton he's a brilliant player and i didn't care a second about what happened when he came here somebody thought he was injured here yeah, was injured and it's it's not so easy to start he gets the shot away oh goodness he's gone in adam lalana I saw Dejan Lovren play before he, before he came here and I knew he's brilliant. Devo Gorigi, when he was 17, everybody knew he's the biggest striker to land in the world. He played for the Belgium national team. And Joe Allen, uh, I, I knew him from Swansea. I, I watched football much longer than I'm here. So um, I knew all this. So it's not that I, that I think, okay, you, are, you can't play football, but believe me, I can make you a world star. That's not how it is. But these players are really skilled. We all can fail, we all can make mistakes. It's not important, it's only how you handle it, how you react on it. And so, how I said, I have more, still more, much more really heavy and hard defeats in my life than, than wonderful wins. And so uh, I know how to, um, how to come out by myself, how to go back and on track by myself. And so that's all I give. I'm 48 years old. I have more experience in all, nearly all parts of life than my players. So, and I came here with absolutely nil talent, nil skill, but I could do the way. And uh, okay, for managing, yes, but not for playing football. Um, but I'm here in Liverpool. I was a Dortmund. I was German champion. Nobody could expect when I started. So when these players with their bases, um, what they can do, when they, when they try everything, that's, that's the question. So if I can do, then imagine what they can do. And that's, that's pretty easy to, to show them this way. It's not just the players you've wooed. The English media, they are fascinated by you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Your press conferences, they're warm, they're self-deprecating, they're comedic, occasionally potty-mouthed. So the corner is already sh So you have not to say, I, I saw it was sh So you can try to... Um, yeah, that would help in a game like this. Sorry, mm. I said it twice. <laughs> rubbish. Always passionate. You declared your team to be the biggest rubbish ever after out shooting Norwich. After the game, it feels funny, but it's, uh, it's, it's really rubbish what we are doing. And um, so we have to solve this. We need to score goals and not concede, you said, of your game plan before crushing Manchester <laughs> City. And then, very important, shoot the ball in the goal. Uh, and don't concede one and then everything is okay. You make it sound so easy. Yeah, that's football. Cool, eh? <laughs> and after my favourite, you looked at the camera and you just said, boom. Well, the best word I can say but uh, will describe this was boom. <laughs> <laughs> one German journalist who's watched you, he said you have an ability to mesmerise people. If Klopp had started a political party, they would have voted him into government 
immediately. I think we give, we take all the money we have and buy the set play player specialists and bring them only on the pitch. No, we cannot solve this on the transfer market. That's German sarcasm, isn't it? Yeah. I, I'm not sure. Maybe it's worldwide sarcasm. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. Cheers, nice See what is the secret to communicating with the English press? Because every manager no, that's, in England that's, that's wants to know. That's the easiest, but that's the easiest thing. Oh, I said, I don't care. These young players are our future. If we handle them like horses, we got horses. I, I don't care. I, I know press conference is an important part. And I give all the information that I can give. So that's, that's all. If I like the question, I give a good answer. If I don't like the question, I give a bad answer. That's how it is. It's an easy game. You're gonna, it became a little bit too interesting there at the end, I'd imagine, for you. But... No, to be honest, not. It's, um, that was clear. And I don't care a second before and not a second after. So that's, <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's important. It's not about saying what they want to hear. Sometimes you, one comes <laughs> to the other. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about um, being funny because of being funny. Uh, you don't understand, huh? Eh? <laughs> What a pity. Uh, you should learn. Uh. If I have the possibility to enjoy uh, the things I do. Was, was that accurate? Nein. No. Have you ever done a pre-match interview in a tea room before, Jürgen? For sure. For sure. You cannot imagine where I played by myself. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's nice. It's everything here what you need. Um, I was looking out for my cup, but there's no cup with my name. Press conference are a break of the serious things I have to do all day. I have really, I need to work really a lot, but interviews and press conferences are not work. They are only, yeah, I have to do it, so I do it. Jim, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Next, that magical night against Dortmund, and how long will the manager need? before Liverpool are truly a Jurgen Klopp grade operation. We have to develop our game, our style, everything. We have to create one of the most special atmosphere in world football that's possible at Liverpool. We've got to talk about the Dortmund game. <laughs> what a night. In the medieval ages, ballads would be written about that victory. You're 2-0 down against your old mob. You're having your pants pulled down, spanking with the whole German sporting public watching. And what amazed me about you is that you didn't back down. Lesser people, me, would have just hidden away, tried to get out of the stadium. You stood in your technical area, proud, defiant, urging your team on. Where does that sense of optimism and just courage come from? How is that? I had bigger defeats than this. It's, uh, there are more important things in life than a play game against Dortmund. So, and I have no problem. I have, to, I have to learn accepting defeats long, long ago. So that's not a problem that you, that you lose. The problem is um, how long you try to win. And that's more the, to, to what you have to think about. I was not too happy with conceding in the, okay, in the first nine minutes two, two goals. That, but I was not too happy with this. And I knew everything can happen now. You can lose against a quality side like Dortmund. You can lose 6 7 nil. That's no problem. They can do it. So, but I, it's not, these 90 minutes are not the time to, to think about this. I saw us playing then like we wanted to play. We created more chances against Dortmund than 100% of all teams, Bayern Munich included, all Porto, all um, Tottenham, in the last 20 games together. So we really knew how to play them, and we did it, but, no, because, but it was still 2-0 at halftime. And what, that was the reason why we came in the dressing room, and we, we were really cool. Not because we thought, um, OK, we have to, to push them. It was the truth. It was easy to see. We are in a good way. Yes, we conceded two goals, right. But we, had, we created a lot of chances. That's another truth. And if we do this again, we can change the game. And Another victory came on the eve of the 27th anniversary of the Hillsborough tragedy, made it all the more poignant. It would soon be followed 
by the 4-0 defenestration of Everton in the derby, which was like watching a big cat toy with a mouse, a very <laughs> athletically challenged mouse. There have been some erratic results this year. Wijnaldum on the right foot! Oh, it's in! It's a new goal! Is it a skirtle last? Another shot to add to the collection. The losses to Newcastle and to Southampton. Southampton are taking on Liverpool at their own game. Here's Sadio Mane! Incredible! What did you learn the most from? The good performances or the bad performances? I analyse, well, we analyse games always um, apart from the result. So the result is only important for the table. The, the performance is important for the development. So we always put off, cut the goals, and then we watch the game. And um, so we could learn of all these games, but um, we could not ignore our situation. Nobody want to nobody wanna hear explanations when they sound like excuses. So we had, we had a lot of injuries before we came here. We had injuries, and that's how it is. When the season starts with this, then you, you stay always in this circle because another player comes back, but he's not he's healthy meanwhile, but not fit. So he has to play too often because another player is out there. And that was a circle. It was not too easy coming out. And I, I have no idea, to be honest, and with the Newcastle game away, it was for sure not our best game. We had a problem with the start in this time. In this time, we had a few games in a row where the start in the game was not too good. We developed this. We had a few games we set pieces in this season. So we, 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 so, we solved this problem. So it's not about always worrying about the, the, the what happened. If we would have done this, and would have done this, then it would have, now would be better now. That's not like life should work. In your interview for the Dortmund job, you were clear to the board. You said it takes a long time for a great young team. It can't be created overnight. How long will it take at Liverpool before you have a squad that is true Jurgen Klopp grade, physically, mentally, tactically, and talent-wise? I have no idea. Yeah, I have no idea that I, there's no, there's no um, the time schedule where it's in a t -t -t done, 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 and now we are. And so, but I, I think, and I see we are, we are on a really good way, on a really good way, and um, these players all developed. Um, great, especially as a team, the development is really easy to see and I, I enjoy the work with them together. So we've, we will see how long it takes. The problem is with development in football, you can develop uh, as much as you want and the, the, the teams around you will try the same. So and you have again to be a, a competitor. So that's, 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 uh, that's life in football, but uh, there's no problem with this. We have to we have to develop our, our, our game, our style, everything. We have to create one of the most special atmosphere in world football that's possible at Liverpool. So that we, that we enjoy the game um, not because, or that the atmosphere is not because of the opponent. When Man United is in, it's pretty easy with outstanding performance. We need performances like this. I don't want to say the wrong thing about the club, but if you play against, I don't know, Kramje <laughs> or, or Huddersfield, uh, it's a, that, that's, that's important that we, that we want to celebrate our own performance and not because the other team is a big team. So that's how we, we, could improve, we can improve a lot of things and um, that's what we try. And uh, so um, on this way, it's, it's work. The nice thing is when you are successful and you're still together, and you're successful in three years, then you can, in five years, you can look back and think the first two years were, re were really important. But if you want, only want to be, if you want to be successful, maximum successful in the next year, then you have one year full of pressure, full of, uh, you, you play draw and it's a catastrophe and things like this. So cool down. Everybody can believe me. I'm ambitious to the highest level. I'm really ready for everything. But I know it's work and work needs time. And time can be a week, can be a month, can be a year, can be two years. But if we, if we still stay really together and, and try to go this way together, then it's a bright future for Liverpool. Last question for you. Jürgen, one of the things I most admire about you, you seem to have an almost infinite reservoir of optimism <laughs> and joy. The football world, it's a hard, cynical place. What's your secret? I believe in God. It's very easy. I believe in God, and my only job is to, to, um, to do my best in life, to, to care for my family, to care for the people I feel responsible for. So my only pressure is to be a good human being. I have no other pressure. Um, that's quite easy.
and to leave every place that you've been at better after you leave than it was before? If possible, very. Yeah, I like to do this, yes. Jurgen Klopp is a singular man who uses belief, optimism and perspective in equal measure. For Liverpool, this could be galvanising. Beneath the warmth, self-effacement and humour of his press conferences, <laughs> <laughs> is a leader confident in his ability to use his passion, intelligence and tactical acumen to transform the culture that surrounds him. Liverpool lead the leaders! This is a manager sure of his ability to make the most of every player at his disposal and create a bold, dominant, winning collective. Liverpool Football Club, revered for decades as football's gold standard, routinely won league titles and European Cups as if by divine right. Very quick, um, yes, I'm always on a, more on the positive side, but during a game it's something, something happens with the first whistle, I'm not too sure what. Um, and um, But everything is different in this moment, so I'm, I'm smart enough to know that there are a lot of Nearly everything is more important than football, but not for me in this 90 minutes so, or in England 97 because they live love overtime. <laughs> when I saw five minutes overtime, I thought oh, I, I couldn't understand why. <laughs> yeah, but during these 97 minutes, and um, I'm involved. However, um, I try to push. If you think you are tired, watch at me. I'm not. <laughs> So maybe I can give a little bit better. I'm like the, 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 the petrol station, uh, like the engine. If um, somebody's tired, I try to push a little bit and to give a few information. But it looks really crazy, I know. It's a transformation that comes over you. You turn into like an air guitar <laughs> here. Right? And when I see you smash your spectacles while celebrating in a moment of victory against Norwich City. It's crazy! It is insane! And so is he! Every Liverpool fan I know, every Dortmund fan that I, I know, we see a man who loves football, emotional football. Yeah. And I don't want to project, Jürgen. What is it that you love about football? First of all, the possibility to win. I love the game itself. That means 11 boys, how I started, um, play together, make each other better. Um, you can win against better teams, that, um, things like this. You don't have to be the best, and can, but you can win. Though rich in tradition, the club was slow to adapt to the advent of the Premier League era. A team that once saw triumph as their due has not won the league in over 26 years. Enter manager Jurgen Klopp, an exuberant, driven, tactically intelligent change maker with a track record of transforming the clubs he leads into buccaneering, winning teams that fulfill their passionate fan bases' wildest dreams, and then some. I travelled to Liverpool and met with the former Dortmund manager to uncover the secrets of his leadership strategies, hear how he learnt them, and go inside the mind of Jurgen Klopp. There's the leap from Jurgen Klopp. A chest-pounding reaction. He can have a good chuckle about that. Klopp is delirious! Jurgen Klopp, this season, one of the sights I've enjoyed the most. It's not a goal. It's not a save. It's the sight of you on the sideline when Liverpool have scored in full-throated, unbridled joy. What goes through your mind in those seconds? Is it the, the thrill of a fan? <laughs> Or is that a manager who's seen something that he's worked hard on the training ground pay off on the field? 
oh, I have not a real idea about what going back through my mind when I watch it afterwards. I think it looks like nothing. <laughs> um, actually, and, and most of the time, I'm a, a cool guy, to be honest. I'm not too easy. Um, I'm not getting angry very 